finding a friend. What's a friend? Oh no, I don't know what a friend is. Who would know what a friend is? Would you guys? Donde esca friendosia? I don't know what I just said. The next morning, it was quieter than usual at the breakfast table. Mm hmm. Only the sound of silverware and chewing interrupted the awkward silence. Mm hmm. <gasps> Brightness! I just finished jarring a mess of jam last night. Uh huh. So that'll need to get delivered into town today. Okay. So what you and Rolo got? What did you and Rolo get up to yesterday? Oh, nothing interesting. Yeah, I was in a I was just in a dumpster with toxic chemicals in them and also a dead body. A dead body was put on top of me. It sure was. I'm not lying. You guys better watch previous one to find out. Yeah, you better do. Oh, here we go. Ah, ooh, okay. Bye, Grandma. Hello. That's probably binary, but it's probably just showing me that I can't read. <gasps> Calm down. Uh, they're so ag like, you can sense the aggravation in their voice. Aggravation. Oh, all those dots and diddly doos. No, of course it was the right thing to do. Ah! I didn't do anything. No one saw me do anything. Why would you see me do anything? No, there was nothing that happened just now. Start gathering, folks. I'll be right there. Are you sure there isn't anything you wanted to tell me about yesterday? No, I definitely didn't do anything yesterday. I just talked to some people, reminisced about grandpa, I mean, papa. Yeah, and no, this is not a quality Lucy stream. This is a terrible popcorn mashup, sure. Anything I want to tell you? Not really, we just sort of ran around a bit. Yeah, exactly, that's right, grandma. We just ran around a bit. <laughs> And broke down a fence and did things they will never speak of ever again. Gran's brow furrowed. Oh, oh no, Grandma, Granny, Grana, Grana, Granima. She let out a long sigh. Her voice was quiet and even. Mm hmm. I have, to, I have to go take care of something. You are to stay in this house for the day. I am, but I want to go outside, Grandma. I want to I, I want to reminisce about Papa again. Yeah. Under no circumstances can you leave. What? If I'm not back by dinner, there's stew in the ice box. Oh my, oh my god, my pillow. Oh my god, my reading pillow's fallen down on the ground. I kind of use it as a cushion to absorb sound. But, um, it's not doing that right now. I'm going to place it behind me so I can absorb more sound and make my, make this sound better. Does this sound better? Um, uh, no, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um. Uh, I'm gonna walk around. You guys think it sounds better? Does it sound better? No, it doesn't. It sounds exactly the same. I know. Yeah, thank you all for telling me. Um. Uh. Ye. Yeah. Okay. All right. Back to this. So the ice box. So it is an ice box. I think I don't know if I talked about it last time, but I didn't. Uh, but I thought that that looked very much like. Um, if you go uh, and look up like. The very first refriger refrigerators made. Uh, the very first time kind of kind of refrigerators um, uh, uh, were ice boxes. You literally put stacks, blocks of ice in them, and that cooled down everything in the thing. So you know. Um, uh, so yeah, I don't know why I'm being awkward and talking about. <clears throat> now we go on from the awkwardness. Still awkward, okay. But nothing. You are here to stay, understand? Yeah. Say it. I'll stay here until you get back. But what if Grandma was a body in the basement and she's always over here? That means that you never have to go. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
Good. Oh, and Luca. You left the icebox open. Oh, wait, I did. Oh, no, I did. I opened the icebox. Oh, no. Oh. Uh. Okay. More. We're not made of money, you know. I mean, my dad fished up out of the pond for me. I can probably fish out some ice for you. Just some very, very warm ice. You know, in, in, in his liquid form. Yeah. Okay, grandma is so angry. Oh, the art style is great. The art style is so cute. Well, that was strange. It sure was. Can I, can I, can I, oh, I can inspect. Oh, I can. <laughs> oh, no. It's gonna, oh, it's gonna say closed. Okay, I'm gonna keep that closed this time. Because closing it is probably a better idea. I, I, I didn't know the game kept track of that. That's so cool. Okay, that is actually really cool. Okay, okay, okay. In the bushes we go. There's this one bush I want to check out. Because one bush is really cool. And bush bush is really cool as like a bush bush bush. All right, I can jump in the game. I do not know why there would be parkour in the game. Maybe there isn't parkour and I'm just making it up. You know, you never know. I'm going to turn that off and be a good kid this time. All those meat and onions and flowers just there. A faint electronic sound floated in the air. Oh. I'm I'm just taking the I'm try, so it is beeps. I, is it the open is it the creepy open drawer? No. I don't know where it would be. Grandma is the is is granddad's grandfather clock uh, haunted again grandma? Is it I would love to know because I could then exercise it, get my friend exerciser called a Rolo. He is a pretty cool guy. So it's not that. I thought it, 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 it would be like in between the sheets or something like that. Okay. So it's not there. It's nowhere here. Why would it be anywhere here when it could not be over there? Hello? Is anyone there? Uh... It's the ghost of Christmas past. Okay, this is getting kind of scary. Oh, oh, it's the walkie-talkie that we stole. Oh, right. We stole, I mean, we borrowed a broken walkie-talkie. Just very permanently. Hello? Rolo, is that you? That, that pro Those beepings probably mean some... Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Hmm. Strange. Why would I have strangeness? Hmm. Okay, oh, you're gonna keep that open, I guess. Okay. Oh, because the um, because the thing. It's oh, okay. Silent walkie-talkie. He wasn't sure what to think. He, 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 he was thinking so hard though. Uh-huh. Gonna go downstairs and be scared now. I don't want to move. Hmm. Okay, I'll go now. It's fine. It's fine. I'll go now. Don't worry. I'm, I'm, I'm home. I do the... Oh, hey. It's Roll... It's Roxy. 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 If this is about um uh, Mia accidentally kicking you out yesterday. Is is Rolo here? No. Look at me, Luca. This is serious. Is Rolo here? No, I haven't seen him since yesterday. Rolo didn't Rolo. I can say the name properly. Rolo didn't come home last night. What? A pit formed in Luca's stomach. Oh no! Oh no no! Where was the last place you saw him? Uh, we were playing around in Weepwood, and then it, it, it was late, and we went home. Weepwood? If he's alive, I'm, I'm gonna kill that little creep. Is there anything else? And anything that he said? Luca's mouth felt dry. Uh, 
that he is now God and he's gonna ascend to an uh, to another plane of existence. No, we were just messing around. Okay. I need to go let uh, I need to let people know to check the woods. You just stay out of trouble. Go see if he's hiding in the library or something. Luca could feel his heart beating in his throat. Because that's where throats for um, deers are located in their throat. Uh, I mean, that's in their heart. In their throat heart? Throat heart. Yeehaw. Yeehaw. Alright. Rolo. Roll low, 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 low. Roll low, 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 low. Where are you? Check the library for Rolo. I could go back to the creepy place, but you know, let's not do that. Let's. Okay, what about if? I, what if I go to my dad's place? Over here. Nothing. Okay. That's fine. Um, because... Oh, yeah, he do a sneeze. Again, it's such a cute art style. Love it. I really do. It's so, so good. I can't go there because that's illegal. Ooh, hey. You're, you're, you're one of those mean kids, weren't you, who was telling the other kid to steal from Pigster. Hey, Bert, have you seen Rolo? Nope. So uh, I've been mostly talking. Uh, I've mostly been talking to clipboards. Uh, they're setting up lots of stuff uh, at the festival. Uh, the one he said has a has, has uh, the process to answer. I told him that was fine. I'll wait right here until he gets back. I'll not wait with you. Sorry, I don't want to wait with you. I never wait with you. I only wait around you. Uh, okay. Ooh. Oh yeah, I can go there again. Um, I, before I go, oh, I have to go to the library, don't I? I might as well go here and check out the treehouse and stuff because why not? Hey, Jetson, have you seen Rolo come around? Uh, I'll come by this way by the shelf? Afraid not. Hmm. Hmm. Yes, I'm enjoying the music. So yeah. All right, so I I want to try fish a little bit. I want to see if the fishing thing is slightly different this time. I'm gonna assume that they're gonna be more or less the same. Yeah, it's it's the same thing. Uh, looks like we need some new bait. What do you what do, what do you say we hit out and find some more? Uh, okay, so we're gonna have to come back later when there's probably new bait and new new stuff like that. Okay, that's fine. That is fine, that is fine. Mission control, authorized personnel only. So, let's go to the treehouse first. No one there. Yeehaw with the meme off. All right, so let's, I guess we're gonna go downstairs now. No point staying there because there's no one there to stay for, ah. Uh, I forgot where the, oh no, yeah, uh, the uh, creepy places, the creepy facilities through the city, so you have, have to go through the city either way then. Uh, I can stand there, but that's, no, that has no point. Zzzz, he's B. Howdy, Luca. Hello again, Pete. I'm not Pete, you silly goose. It's Toby. You could have fooled me. Yeah, you could have fooled me. Hey, yo, it's uh, no problem, oh. The most important thing is we'd love to hear your thoughts. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting that impression. <laughs> We're all part of something special. And it, and it all start. I think this dude is just basically um, uh, brainwashed by his superior. Or he's, he wants to be so superior. Uh, he wants to become a superior so much that he's uh, that he's just doing the stuff that he has to do for to be uh, to become that. Um, um, I don't know where I'm going with this. I really don't. I'm going to pretend like I do. Uh, so imagine, um, uh, just imagine the big things. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> right here in Beacon Pines. I got it. He looked up from the clipboard excitedly. Mm hmm I just feel like he's someone who's like, who, who li li like his job so much that he doesn't do much outside of his job. Uh, or he could be one of the secret people who have been secretly 
uh, tearing this town apart from the inside out and removing bodies and stuff like that. You never know. That's right. So how about you start by telling me, look, no offense, but I've got my own stuff to take care of. Oh, wow. He's angry. Gah, you joker. We're all part of this together. You let us know when you're free to answer a few questions. Okay. I don't like the why he says I don't like the why I don't I, I don't like the way he says that. We we really need to get back to work. There's a couple more minutes. If Rocky said she'll be here, then she will be here. I just don't see why I'm standing around doing nothing and waiting for Moxie. When I could be standing around doing nothing and getting paid for it. Come on, Lumi. Roxy needs our help. Oh my god, Roxy. Ah, oh, my parents wouldn't listen. No offense, but isn't Rolo always getting out in about trouble? Something feels different this time. What can we do to help? We need to check we need to check where the adults aren't. So I guess it's to, up to us to check Weep Woods. Our shift doesn't end for another couple hours. We could spend the time making posters. That would be great. I guess. Right, Fitz and I will check the deep woods. We'll be back later to pick up the posters. And I think my dad has a map of Weep Woods. Let's swing by my house and grab it before we head out. I'm sorry I'm not doing very, very much voices. Um, I, I've been resting my throat for like a week now. And um, it's going not bad. It's going pretty good. So, um, yeah. Oh, my throat just died. All right, let's, uh, so Roxy's going there. Uh, it's the big, big boy bear dude. I was going to say pug, but he's not a pug. Uh oh, 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 you're sleeping on the job. Hey, Don. Yawn. <gasps> She's adorable. She's so adorable. Look at her. I love her. She is perfect. <gasps> she is so adorable. Is it true about Rolo? He didn't come home last night. I wonder if it's connected. Con connected to what? I was taking on reports about an increased activity around town. What sort of activity? When all those trucks, mechanical noises, strange lights, your typical shady stuff. Who would be who would be doing all that and why? We'll have a few leads. Oh my jaw just oh. Ouch. The Valentine family's always these features. Paranel Har Harvest certainly has the resources. Do you have any idea where Rolo could be? The best place to start looking is where we, the trail went cold. Where do you see him last? We were in Wheatwood. Right by Valentine's fertilizer. I'll stay at Wheatwood when my shift ends. I'll do my best work at night. She is adorable! <gasps> oh, and the irony of up at dawn you stand. Oh, that's hilarious. But also th that she is adorable. She is best character in the game now. I guess uh, Mrs. Uh, uh, Fratelli is getting ready, ready for the first festival. First of all, I can't say words. Last chance diner. Oh boy, that's sure is some marketing there. Uh, I want to quickly check this area just a little bit. I don't want to miss any of the story words because I feel like the words are going to get important now since there's a whole... There's a whole timeline tree and everything like that, so you know. That transition is so good. It is so good. I I love that. Oh. What's this about a missing child? I must stress that the situation is Oh no wait, you're not the big boy dude that I went slow for. I must stress the situation's gonna be under control. It already seems so terrible. Are you sure there's nothing we can, we can do to help? Nonsense, young Mrs. C Mr. Cora. We'll turn up safe and sound, I'm certain. You just focus on settling in. My two, my tr I trust my sister has supplied you with suitable lodgings. Uh, yes, Mr. Valentine has been more than accommodating. You were just telling our daughter, Rebecca, that... Oh, I'm not... Not what you're doing. Ah, oh, no. Do I need to find the daughter now? Do I have any daughter for it? Is, is this a fetch quest where I'm fetching a pet? Well, not a pet. They're technically wild animals. Well, they're not wild. They're civilized wild animals. Hmm. Hi, Luca. What's up? You haven't seen Rolo around here recently, have you? He doesn't come around here much. Not since they made a rule that he can only order decaf. Uh, oh, yeah. We are like middle school kids, aren't we? Right? Maybe. 
Mayhubles? His eyes went wide in disbelief. What do you mean, vanished? That's impossible! I think there's a mosquito on my leg. I mean, flying around my foot. I don't know why. I guess it needs to find a wiki feed for itself, but uh, it's just, just not, not fast enough. Hmm. Oh my. He doesn't even see the danger he's in. Oh, he sure he doesn't. He sure doesn't. History Museum? Ooh. Hey, uh, hey, Yisun. History Museum. It's, it's laughable, really. Did you happen to see Rolo in there? No, just a shadow of a family. Cl clinging on a town, clinging on to the past. Oh, okay. I sure am clinging hard. Feel free to check for yourself. But don't expect to have your mind blown. I'm gonna blow some minds tonight. Hey, Griffin. Has Rolo been by? I haven't seen him all day. I'm sure he'll show up safe and sound. And when he does, oh my jaw. Tell him there's a strawberry chocolate double scoop waiting for him. Strawberry chocolate double scoop. On the house. I prefer strawberry and vanilla. I'm not the biggest fan of uh, chocolate ice cream. Uh, mainly because all the chocolate ice creams I've had doesn't taste like chocolate. It just tastes synthetic or weird or something like that. And also it's usually very dry if that makes sense like i know cold things are usually dry but chocolate ice cream especially when you eat it you just feel dehydrated dehydrated and i don't know not, not the biggest kind of chocolate ice cream he like that Ooh, he sure will oh la la no touching the mega melon oh it's gonna break <laughs> smack i'm gonna smack you i'm gonna Smack you good. <laughs> Gonna smack that melon. Gonna smack it. Smack a Rooney. Uh, let's check the build a bulb. That's a that would be a great that's a great business plan. Well, a uh, small business plan. I don't think it would be extremely big, but it's a pretty good small business plan. Oh. Okay. We all know Beacon Pines is a great town. What you may not know is great towns grow from mighty roots. And that is why you cannot tell the story of Beacon Pines without telling the story of one sharper Valentine. Young Sharper's keen intellect and strong moral fiber led to a grand vision. A vision of a community dedicated to a better tomorrow. In his own words, a better tomorrow is within our grasp, but it requires a singular mind to harness it. Uh -huh. Lucky for us, he decided to grow that vision here in Beacon Pines. And how does one grow a better tomorrow? With fertilizer, of course. Valentine's uh -huh. Fertilizer Company became the lifeblood of a town yearning for purpose. But then tragedy struck. A scientific experiment gone wrong. Oh. An accident which took Sharper away from us far too soon. Oh. To this day, we struggle to pick up the pieces. But one foul harvest isn't enough to stop the people of Beacon Pines. And that science experiment is still going on, isn't it? Valentine lives on. It lives in the hearts of everyone with a dream for a better tomorrow. Oh, that was a big draught or whatever happened. The farm was closed down for this whole time, wasn't it? That was that. Okay. I would like to revisit that. That was unhelpful. <laughs> no, it was helpful because there was a science, science experiment going on with the Valentine family in, in, in the past. That gives us information. Uh, so there's no, no reason to go there. We've already gone there. We're going to go to the right now. We're gonna go right to the right to brothers. Sharper Valentine, founder of Beacon Pines, never made what can a great man can do given time. Much, if you ask me. <laughs> yeah, maybe a little bit. But also not, may maybe, I don't know. Okay, so we're gonna go to the library, but before I go to the library, I'm gonna go elsewhere first. Nuncrete's drugstore. Maybe Rolo found drugs and realized that there's no other reason to go on with life without drugs, uh, that's... Oh gosh. I'm gonna go here. Oh, whoa, 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 I see you there, I see you there. Uh, Joey, have you seen the roll around? No, sorry, Luca. I've had my eyes in the dirt looking for beetles. I can't seem to find any. He never came home last night. Do you think it's because he's, it's been colder than normal? I don't see why that would have to do anything with, to do with Rolo. No, the beetles! Do you think the temperature could use like the circadian rhythm in the rhythm or something? Who should say? I'm the beetologist. <laughs> just, keep, I can just keep an eye out for him, would you? Of course. Alright. Luca peeked up 
top of the beehive. It appeared to be deserted. That's strange. And right next to the creepy, creepy forest with all the creepy things in there, with all the experiments and stuff. After the foul harvest destroyed their wealth and reputation, the Valentines. Yeah, okay, we've already been through that. Um, so definitely say that the, the animals in the forest, or well, the insects in the forest, are 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 not normally around which probably means that there are still more experiments going on and the force has yet to heal like truly one of the coolest things is like one of those um like uh those uh the arts and the videos which show nature growing back where people have abandoned things it truly really just shows you how nature can come back and it's it's truly magnificent magnif magnificent how um that is i don't know i just find that really insane and really cool that's just me and i'm weird we go here. Mm. Oh, they found it! Dang, they brought it up. The, they brought it up the way in. It's not that hard to cut that off. It's a, it's a wired fence. Whoop! Well, I'm gonna grab one with me because I can. And oh, it doesn't come with me. And I can't go in the green ass. That green acid was not there before. I I don't remember the green acid being there. I remember nothing. I am dumb. My IQ low. My brain Q low. Only my Yuki is high because they be cool. All right, so I'm going to go with the library because I have nowhere else to go. Oh, is is, is it a penguin? Kato volunteered at the library during the summers. He wasn't very social, so he dedicate each summer to becoming an expert in a single subject. Uh -huh. Making him a reliable source of very particular knowledge. If you were to ask Kato something he didn't know, he'd escape into the dusty old bookshelves and return with just the right thing. Mm -hmm. Hey, Kato. Kato was lost in his reading. Luca crooked his neck to see the title. Introduction to Melatology. Melatology. Melatology is a study of uh, melods. Um, uh, melatology is a study of uh, insects, right? Bees and stuff. From what I remember, I could be wrong. I probably am wrong. I don't know. Um, it is a penguin. You would not survive in real life in these conditions, but okay, okay. Or it could just be like a bird. I don't know. Good book. Don't know. Just started it. He gestured to the shelves. I'm really running out of books. I haven't. Oh my jaw! Holy. I am now not gonna just talk. I'm just gonna play the game while I'm talking. It seems like the best thing to do. <laughs> now it's on to the wonderful world of bees. Turns out bees are pretty cool. For instance, did you know that 70% of bees actually live in underground tunnels? Or that if there are two queens in a hive, they'll fight to the death for supremacy? Oh, oh yee haw, let's Naruto this up. That's interesting, but you haven't seen Rolo around here recently, have you? Not since yesterday. Keep an eye out for him, okay? Sure thing. I'll, uh, if I see him, you'll be the first to know. <laughs> I'm gonna stuff you in snow. Okay, so I also wanna explore. <gasps> cute little fox, cute little fox. Jays. Hey, Luca. You're welcome by. Oh, I, I, I don't get cute little fox image. I was actually surprised. He's usually here early these days when the new issue drops. Uh, Rolo's the biggest Hank Atomic fan I know. Besides myself, that is. Well, if he does swing by, tell him to meet me you know where. I don't know where. No, he knows where. Ooh, roger that space, cadet. The bottom corner okay. shelf was a dusty array of thick science books. Only one binding was clean enough to read. Cellular biology and the chemistry of mitosis. Meosis is better. Mycological phosphorescence. Ugh. More like myo complete loss of interest. Like, oh my gosh. Like, oh my god, right guys? Like, so boring. The books are like so boring. A salad centric travel guide for the mildly adventurous. That would be pretty cool. Like a salad journey across, um, uh, like a salad journey across a country. That would be cool to do. Sally Seashore's simple succulent sundries. That seems like an um book that people read in private. Luca brushed off a smudge of dust, or 
Maybe it was flour. Uh. Thirty recipes so easy you'll doubt. Oh yeah, yeah, I definitely, I, I, I definitely thought it was a recipe book. You know, private recipe book. Mm, succulent. The methods and ruminations of Patrick C. Montesquieu. Montesquieu. One of the greatest acting minds of our time. Mm. By Patrick C. Montesquieu. <laughs> perfect. It is perfect. Oof. Oofer doofer. As one I used to know said. Oofer doofer. The entire top level of the library was devoted to comics. Ooh. Most of which were Hank Atomic and the myriad of lesser revered spin offs. Nice. Very, very cool. Okay, so. Well, I don't know where to go. I, I guess I have to go to the treehouse now, right? That's the only other place where. Oh, hi! What sort of monster puts candy behind a locked door? No, no, that's, that's, that's not the accent I use. What sort of monster puts candy behind a locked door? Oh, oh it's not! The doggo! I thought it was the Doberman doggo. Oh yeah, Mr. Nuncreed works uh, weird hours sometimes. Of course he does. How about you? Are you a bat cat? You look you look like a halfway in between a bat and a cat. When do I work? No, what's your name? Luca Van Horn. You new here? Yep, not by choice. Max family moved often. Giving her little time to establish any real connections. Mm. She would tell you she prefers it that way. I'm looking for my friend Rolo. He didn't come home last night. So he's missing? I guess so. Like, missing, missing? Does that sort of thing happen about here a lot? Luca shifted his feet uncomfortably. Well, that sucks. Yeah. So I should probably get going. Oh, bye! Hey, wait up. What? Luke pulled a coin from her pocket. Oh, she's a cool kid. I'm coming with you. What? So says the unlucky penny. Unlucky? Yep, well, technically landed on heads. Leave this kid to find his friend alone. But I always do the opposite. Oh, that's kind of like me and Rolo. I guess Rolo is my unlucky penny. But that's how it. A person should never be without their unlucky penny. Let's go find him! Don, 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 don. The name's Beck. Pleasure to meet you, Beck. I, I suppose I could use some help. Try to keep up. Wait, 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 I just realized I'm not supposed to be out of the house till my grandma comes back home. Oh, we're gonna get so grounded. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay, so I have no reason to be here anymore. Uh, unless going here with Beck is gonna change something. Which I don't think it will. Oh, it will. Nice. There you go. Luca felt a chill as he approached Beck. Her eyes were locked on the strange green liquid. The nearby grass was coated in a fine layer of frost. Is this the thing normal around here? Because puddles of glowing ooze are definitely not what I expected from this place. I have no idea what, this, what that stuff really is. Well, the next obvious step is science! Like, oh, science! And what does science suggest? Poke it with a stick! Actually, no, science suggests that you go, um, that you see if it's hot. If it's uh, radiating warm to the touch, that means it's um, uh, very, very hot. Uh, then you have to, um, I think, drop a tester in it to see if it's acidic um, and or basic. Is science a basic bitch or not? What, what, what am I? Luca watched as Beck dipped a broken tree branch into the goo. Beck's eyes widened as flowers grew oh. from the dead wood. Are they trying to resurrect Valentine? First small buds, which quickly bloomed into vibrant petals. That explains the dead bodies. They're trying, to, they're trying to bring the dead back to life. So that's why the dead bodies are being dumped there. What the? Cool. As quickly as they had grown, the flowers began to shrivel and turn gray. Oh. Beck dropped the stick with a grunt of disgust. What if it, what, what if you dropped it in it and, and, and it just stayed there? Would it, would it eventually become like a, I don't know, big old treehouse thing? Okay, so the science tells us this gunk is weird as heck. You think? Yeah, it seems dangerous. 
Hey, Tish, look where the cat dragged in. Yep. I, I, I don't know. Ow, my jaw. Ah, my the right side of my jaw keeps going like crook. But it's fine. It'd be like that sometimes, you know? You know? I don't have time for this right now, Iggy. Oh, don't say anything like that. It hurts Tish's feelings. Ain't that right, Tish? Yup. She looks fine to me. Why, hello. I don't think we've, we've probably been introduced. Iggy's a name. This is not my companion. This is my compatriot, Tish. Yup. You've probably heard of us. Can't say I have. I forgive you just this once on account of you being new around here. Why would you hang out with, with this dud? Uh, cause I like duds. I'm the duddery do of this diddery dad. Oh, she's pretty alright. You, why do you have to be so? You. Has, has he told? Has he even told you that his parents skipped out on him? Shut up. It's true. They got rid of uh, of have such a of have such a pathetic kid and uh, and left him. He, I'm only gonna say this one time. Don't. Talk about my family. Family. Haha, <laughs> well look who's uh, grown a backbone and, and, and now that now that a girl's around. First he pop first his pops croaked, then his mom finally couldn't take it anymore and bounced. Oh, oh it's the word playtime. His sneer lit by the glowing puddle. We have slap. We have smack. We have smack. Beck could see tears welling in Luca's eyes. His fists clenched. Some things about Beacon Pines were very different from the city, but a bully from a hayseed town is really no different from a city bully. Beck took a deep breath and thought. And it bust out the strange, the tickles. Well, but we, but we have, but, but we have smack. We have smack. Hey, did you want to see something cool? Yeah. Check it. Beck lunged forward and began to tickle under Tish's arms. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. She's gonna fall in the goop and she's gonna grow up to be a big grill. Yup. 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 Tears began to form in Tish's eyes as she gasped for breath between giggles. She's gonna fall in the goop. Yup, 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 yup. Beck redoubled her efforts until Tish finally had had enough. Yup. What just happened? She seems nice. She seems nice. Sorry for the interruption. I, th I think you were just threatening us. Iggy's eyes darted around, a realization dawning on his face that he was now outnumbered. I just remembered. I have to be somewhere. Mm-hmm. See you around, new kid. Iggy kicked at the puddle before making his escape. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, you're gonna have a big brain. You're gonna have the biggest chungus brain in the world now. He's gonna grow trees out of it. What a little creep. Uh, but I think you got a little ooze in your hair. Beck shook the ooze out of her hair as best as she could. Is it bad? It depends. What are your feelings about having a more mature, refined look? Oh god. Oh god. Okay, that's okay. Chapter four. Okay. The best policy. Ooh, okay. Luca paused for a moment, catching his breath. He'd only just met Beck, and somehow he already managed to drag her into this mess. Hopefully, he could make it up to her. Mm -hmm. But finding Rolla was his primary concern. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I need to go. Oh my gosh! Hi. Look, what the hell are you doing out here? And where? And where did the? And where did? And where? And what did the kid with the gray hair just run past us in a panic? Roxy and Fitz looked drained. Oh no. It was clear they'd spent all day searching. Oh no. It's only been like an hour though. I don't care who she is. What happened? We were just helping her. We were just helping look for Rolo. Look, uh, I need you to start. I, I need you to start telling me the truth. Roxy's temper could often be dismissed as the impatience of an older sibling, but this was the most intense Luca had ever seen her. Her eyes were wild and unfocused, mm. looking straight through Luca. Mm. We're running out of time. In a torrent of rambled words and tears, Luca broke down. Rolo and I weren't just playing in Weep Woods yesterday. 
We were investigating, we were investigating lights in, at the old Valentine warehouse, but someone was there in a strange suit, and we hid in, in the dumpster bag, and, and and a heavy and a heavy body bag dropped on us. And I think it was a body, and so we ran, but we got uh, split up, and I, and I ran home, and it's all my fault, and now my best friend maybe never come back. Wow, just wow. Roxy. Still exhausted and angry, softened briefly as her eyes hunted the ground in thought. With a determined sigh, she looked up at Luca. It's not your fault, Luca. Roll's gonna be okay, I promise. Roxy drew herself up. I'm gonna fix this. Luca, go home. But I wanna help. This is too dangerous for a kid. I can't just sit around. I have to do something. Literally, everyone's telling him to go home. His grandma, his best friend's sister. Yeah, that's basically everyone in the game. <laughs> that sure is. Yeehaw. Roxy tried to think of the safest place to send Luca. Uh, the treehouse. Uh, wait, no. Where could... So, he said he would go home and he ran away, didn't he? And then I, I don't know what happened after that. He just ran away. Huh. I don't know. Interesting. Wait there in case Rolo shows up. Is that like a plan? He wiped his cheeks and gave a quick nod. Hmm. You're the right thing to tell in, in telling me the truth. Uh, well, now we, we know we can trust her, definitely, yeah. Now, Scoot. I'm sc Oh no, don't touch that. Do you really believe his story? What other option do we have? Things have been strange around here leading up to the festival. My dad has been acting weird lately. Well, weirder than normal. Looking into the puddle, Roxy rubbed her arms to warm up. Why is it so cold here? This place even the willies. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no, what are they gonna do with the thing? What are they gonna do? Don't know, no, oh no. I, I want to go back. I need to go back. I need to go back. I have to. It is my duty. It is my sworn duty as protector. And Ren oh, it's him. It's medical dude. Oh. <laughs> uh, it's a drug crazy. Uh, he's right here. He's right over here. He's right to be here. All right. Whoa, don't sneak up on an old fellow like that. Sorry. Who are you talking to? Uh, the ghosts from Christmas past. That's who he's talking to. <laughs> what? Luca motioned to the phone booth. Oh, no. I was just checking because I thought I heard it ring. Sure you were. I 100% believe you. All the adults are now suspicious in the game because uh, um, she said that her mother, sorry, gr uh, dad was uh, suspicious. And now this dude's acting weird and the grandmother was acting weird. Everyone is acting weird. So, mm -hmm. but the dang thing never does. Of course. Yeah, I've never seen anyone use it really. The whole thing is a waste of money, if you ask me. That's true. You know, payphones were a big thing, like for for many many for many many a long times. Um, but not many people use them actually. Um, anymore at least, and and for and and I think in a lot of places now, especially in. Um, the UK, uh, payphones are like, uh, novelty places where you can just go and take like photos and stuff. And on the inside, people like, people like write me messages kind of like in a bathroom stall. Which I think is really fun and having them around just, you know, to liven things up. And I think, um, uh, they're also in the UK, they're planning or they've been doing things like where they put like resuscitation CPR machines inside the payphone thing. So you kind of like, uh, open up the phone thing up and that machine is there. So there's actually some use to those payphones because there's so many around in the city. So instead of wasting money removing all of them, you're instead using them for a reason. So that's really cool. But to think such a big system used to be, is now, or to, to think that such a big system is now obsolete. Um, you know, so like, like a payphones were like widely used and it was a huge big system. Um, uh, but now 
uh, it's not because everyone has a smartphone and then now there's ways of being anonymous on smartphones as well. So you don't really need pay phones. Um, and the big thing about pay phones and movies and stuff is that they're anonymous and whoever they call, I think it's like a, um, it's, it's like a temporary, uh, a call ID that you get. So that's pretty cool. Any word from Rolo yet? Not yet. Long time for a boy to lose his way. It's only been like an hour since he left. I mean, Rolo knows these woods too well to get lost. I suppose you're right. Which means he is not lost and he's hiding away from us or someone. Silly boy's antics have this whole town worried sick. Antics? We all know Rolo likes to play his little pranks. You think this is a prank? What other possible explanation could there be? He's not playing a prank and he didn't get lost. Someone took him. I know it. How would you know that? Unless... Luca, is there something else that you know? Mr. Nuncree gently placed one of his substantial hands on Luca's shoulder. Substantial hands, they say. Dang it, boy, if there is something you know. The music is getting intense. Something that could help your friend you need to tell folks. Oh no. Oh no. Eyes warmed a stern face. There was a deeper emotion hiding beneath it all. Mm -hmm. It was subtle, but Luca could sense something eating away at him. Mm. There was a dash. There was a shame behind those eyes. It was just lurking there, just staying there. Lurking as hard as Yuki is lurking right now. There was a shame lurking behind those eyes a deep sadness oh oh if mr nuncreed was that worried about rollo maybe he could help uh-huh interesting yesterday rollo and i were messing around the old warehouse mr nuncreed raised an eyebrow both of you you were with rollo when he went missing not exactly. I was hiding in the dumpster. The dumpster. What were you doing in there? At first, we were just looking around. Then someone in a strange yellow suit came and dumped something on us. We both got scared and ran. That was the last I saw of him. You got scared by some garbage. Well, that's why you don't go skulking in someone's dumpster. This all makes logical sense. This all makes sense. This is why you don't go in dumpsters, everyone. All of you who's playing Stardew Valley watching this, this is why you don't go through their dumpsters. But it wasn't garbage. I think... I think it was a body. I'm... I'm sure it was just some trash. I don't trust you! No, there was a name tag. It's a deep engineering. Mr. Nuncreed's shoulders slumped. Oh, no. I wish you wouldn't have said that. A deep sigh bellowed from his chest. Well, rip nunchucks. I forgot his name. Oh, Rolo, not Rolo. Why did you have to? I tried, Luca. God knows I tried to keep you safe. Luca attempted to take a step back, but Nuncreed's hand clamped down so on the his shoulder. So the people in this town are definitely suspicious more than a couple of people. I think it's probably half the town or something like that. With even the grandma was a bit suspicious. But you, Van Horn's cute. Oh, so the dad knew about this too! Ooh! Ooh! Okay, the story is getting interesting. Here we go. Here we go. The story. I'm actually generally curious about this because it's actually really interesting. Because it's actually really cool. The story is slowly unfolding like this. We were all so close, so close to being done with this. With a firm shove, Nuncreed manhandled Luca into the phone booth. Mm -hmm. What? What are you doing? 
it out of my hands now. So the phone booth is a secret is an entrance, isn't it? The door latched shut with a mechanical hiss. It is. Okay. Yep. All right. Okay, we're all gonna die now. Crap. Oh. 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 As Luca pounded the glass, oh. the floor dropped oh. from under his feet. Oh. The inside of the phone booth was now a loose capsule plummeting at gravity's whim. Luca winced and pressed his hands to the walls. As he braced for impact, the capsule hurried to a surprisingly smooth stop. I love her voice. It goes actually it goes from hurried to smooth. That's really he nice. He felt a cold rush of air and opened his eyes with hesitance. Two large figures in hazmat suits occluded his view. Luca heard the deep, resigned voice of Mr. Nuncreed over an intercom. He knows too much. The end. Oh. Wait. No. No. This isn't the end. It sure is, though. I know there's still much more. Not really, no. Somehow this went wrong. No. Okay, let's try something else. There's not much I can do. I guess instead of that, I do that. Time to bust out the strange. Yeehaw, the Mima. Well, <laughs> time to bust out the strange. Yeehaw, the Mima. Yeah, 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 yeah. Alright, look, it looks like you need a little mud bath. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's wrong with you, new kid? We're about to pound your friend. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Pound me, son. <laughs> Beck stared in silence. The only sign of life being the twitch of an eye. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's weird when people don't talk. Yup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So being a weirdo. Stare. His sister. Uh, hello. Are you some kind of wackadoo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes sense. Wackadoo's dr uh, dr dr drivel in packs. A dud. So that's why the both of you are together in a herd. Okay, this all makes sense now. At the sight of Iggy taunting back, something in Luca snapped. Iggy smirk shifted to a look of shock as Luca launched himself into his stomach. Oh no. Arg! Oh! Oh no! You take my clothes, Rune. I'm gonna. His voice began to slur as he struggled to get up. Oh no! Struggle. Interesting. I know feel so bad, Mister Star. Health? Oh god! I'm sorry. I just. Oh crap! Yup. Oh no. She. Oh, he's a monster. He's a straight up monster now. He's just turning into a monster. A whole the folk. No, it's not a whole folk. That was intense. He's gonna be okay, right? Nothing about this seems okay. Person at the warehouse. The strange ooze and what it did to Iggy. Oh no. Was Rolo caught up in all of this? Oh no. We have to find Rolo. You take the words out of my mouth. Okay, so can I now jump in the thing and it's gonna give me powers because it's gonna make me nice and big and it's, it's gonna make me a nice big biggest boy? I wanna be a biggest boy. I wanna be the biggest of biggest boys. So. Oh, hello there! How you doing, you fancy, fancy man? <laughs> well, then, little buddies. You startled me. What in the dickens are you up to in this part of town? We were just having to look for it, Rolo. Oh, you haven't heard the good news? Rolo showed up safe and sound a bit ago. Really? My jaw out, holy crap. So where was he? It's funny, really. He's got a little turn around in the woods. I don't trust him. Because Jack, not Jack. I forgot his name. But he, the boy, I can't, you can't see the mouse on the screen, but... Um, the main character, the protagonist, if you will, um, said that Rolo knows the woods inside and out. So I don't trust him. Hmm. Hmm. I'm, I'm trying to get the impre I'm trying to get that impression. Rolo, Rolo's at his house now, getting some well-deserved rest. Ah, oh, that's a relief. You two should scurry along before you get lost yourselves. Yeah, come on, Beck. I can't wait to, wait to introduce you to Rolo. Oh, that reminds me. Look, your grandmother was, look, was looking for you. She was? She was worried sick. You should march straight home. I guess. Beck, your folks might be getting worried, worried too. 
I'll walk you home. Oh wait, I think Beck is a cat that ran away um, at, at the fountain. The, fa the fountain lady, right? Yeah, her. I need to talk with Nelly about work anyway. Beck glanced toward Luca. I guess all all's well that all's well that ends well. I'll introduce you to Rolo tomorrow. Sure, life okay. All right. Not suspicious. Oh, bye. He was safe. We don't know that we haven't seen him yet. A wave of relief washed over Luca, which was quickly replaced by a sense of dread. Oh no! I wonder why. Gran is going to kill me. She sure is. If he hurried, he might just make it home before sundown. Chapter 4. Mm -hmm. Our harvest awaits. Oh. Luca took a deep breath and gingerly opened the door, stealing himself for Gran's wrath. Yeehaw. Gran, I'm home. Everything's fine. Oh no, Gran. Oh no. I feel like I've interacted with everything, so I'm just gonna go up here and. Gran? I know I, I, know I wasn't supposed to go anywhere. I was just helping look for Rolo. I don't feel like she's home yet, is she? Hmm. The bushes are suspicious. It was the bushes this whole time! Oh no! It was all the bushes. It was all the bushes' fault. It was all the bush. The bush were doing bushy things in the bushes. Gran? Roxy came over. She was really sick about him. So I figured you wouldn't mind if I helped look for him. Oh no. no. It turns out Rolo is safe and sound. Oh. No. Oh no. Luca was alone. The house was empty. So Gran's not back yet. I guess that's a good thing. Nothing to now do but sleep, I guess. That means that Valentine person was lying. But you have a kid brain and you don't, and you won't understand that, so that's fine. Okay, interesting. Very interesting. Very, Luca very interesting. By the pond, uh huh. Listening to small waves lap against a rock. His father sat in a folding chair in front of him. Without turning, he spoke. Why don't you grab me some nice bait? Sure thing, Dad. Luca hopped over to the tackle box and popped open the lid. Inside was a rolling, buzzing mass. We're fishing with bees? Luca's father gave a warm chuckle. Well, you catch more fish with bees than honey. Pick us out a good one. Never heard anyone do that, but I guess it makes sense because bees would buzz around or something and they have like wings and smaller phalanges. Luca closed his eyes and plucked out a bee. He could feel its wings struggle between his finger and thumb. Uh huh. Holding it at arm's length, he hurried over. His father deftly baited the hook and examined his work. Uh huh. Interesting choice. With a practiced flick of the wrist, the line buzzed in a graceful arc. The water accepted it without a splash or ripple. Uh huh. The wrong choice. Uh huh. But I respect it. The pond began to freeze over. Ah. Sometimes we gotta make the wrong choice before we can make it right. Okay. Pallid ice propagated across the still surface with an alarming speed. This sure isn't a vision or any- I'm not a vision. This sure is gonna be foretelling of something. Luca scrambled back as the ground beneath him turned cold. Dad? Oh god. I don't understand. Sorry, kiddo. Understanding isn't always part of the deal. It sure isn't. The relentless ice shot through the fishing line toward his father. Oh god. Dad, look out. His father casually wound the reel. Mm -hmm. None of it's your fault, you know. Never was. Dad, we have to go. Luca grabbed his father's shoulders, trying to pull him away. Please, you, you have to run. The ice crackled as it spread across his father's hands. That's the thing about fishing, Luca. His chest began to crystallize. You toss your hook in, and you never know what you're gonna pull out. A shock of searing cold ran up Luca's arms. He gave one last desperate tug. The chair tipped backwards in a single frozen mass. Luca tried to stop the momentum, but it was too late. He watched the icy form of his father slam into the hard ground, shattering into a thousand pieces that crowded around his feet. Dad, I don't understand. What does all this mean? 
Everything's a lie. It's all ice. Ice is a, ice is everything. The gentle rustle of leaves was the only reply. Grandma is not back. Oh no. Oh no. Rolo? Oh god. The radio has green goop on it. Faintly, he could hear Rolo amongst the noise. Luca! Luca! Rolo, is that you? Luca! There? Rolo, it's the middle of the night. Luca, thank god! Listen! I don't know how long this thing will work down here. Down here? Down here? His voice was coming through more clearly now. But some words were still just The reason why I'm saying my voice is because it's the radio. Okay, I, I can now make the rules of this world because I am to a DM. I am the DM. Listen to me. Yesterday, grab me. Someone grabbed me yesterday. What? The man in the hazmat suit? It was to some sort of. I think I'm underground. Underground? Are you okay? Kinda. They seem more interested for blah blah blah, blah for now, at least. Mr. Kerr said you made it back home safe. Carrot, no, blah, 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 blah. trust, blah, 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 blah. he's, blah, 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 blah. yeah, it's kind of interesting how only the important, the important things are being um, uh, not picked up by the radio, huh? Very suspicious. The signal went silent. Oh no, bye. Rolo, Rolo, where are you? Luca held still, waiting for a response. Oh no. His pounding heartbeat marking the passage of time. Okay, I think they're gone. Blah, 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 getting worse. I can barely hear His you. Voice began to fade. Blah, blah, blah. Losing signal. Not much time. Blah, blah, blah. Mission control. Blah, 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 blah. I need to know blah, 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 the tree house. You need to blah, 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 the tree house. Blah, blah, the tree house. The signal died for good. Burn the treehouse, break the treehouse, kill the treehouse, poison the treehouse, um, pray to it until it uh, turns into a mega tree. I don't know what you want me to do, dude. What was he trying to say about the treehouse? What's at the treehouse? The antenna! He wants me to use the antenna in the treehouse to get a better signal. Well, you also need to transmit a good signal, and if he's underground, whatever stuff he transmits is going to be bad, so either way it's going to be bad. That's how physics works, at least, but this world could have its own physics for all I know. Rolo, you genius. Luca grabbed the walkie talkie and sprinted to the treehouse. Oh, bye! Ooh. Okay. Okay, I, as, as usual, I want to go around and see. So I can't go there. I want to try and see around the place as much as possible because I, I don't know. I feel like I'm going to get different things at nighttime than daytime. <laughs> That's what the bees said because the bees all disappeared. I heard a group of footsteps approaching. Oh, no. He dashed behind the bushes to avoid being spotted. Oh, wow. I thought those were rocks. <gasps> oh, oh. So we all understand our roles. You can count on me. No, 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 no. I still think we need more time. No, 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 no. This wasn't the original plan. Mr. Tolliver paused, shifting his eyes to one side. No, 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 no. We're all in danger now. I, for one, refuse to sit idly by while that danger persists. Refusal. Harem wants to just keep. I just keep your wits about you. Harem, just keep your wits about you. One long, quiet breath. You're right. You can count on me. I just wish we could have made the deal with uh, the heiress Valentine. Her resources would have still come in handy. As I, as I said, I had no time to contact her after your call this morning. Plans, plans change. How's Luke holding up? He's fine. We should lose the fact that we should lose, lose the sight of the fact that this is all. I know very well what all of this is for. We have no choice. Operation Sparkplug has a new objective. Are we in agreement? The three shared a determined. So they're so they are probably against the company and the Valentines. Probably. 
good. We'll reconvene after the festival. Bye. She knows. She knows I'm there. She a hundred percent knows. Gran. Morning meeting with Mrs. Uh, of uh, Fratelli and Mr. Tolliver to, uh, late at night. Oh! Adorable. Hey, Luca. Da! <gasps> She's adorable! She's so adorable. She's so adorable. Oh, look at her. She's so adorable. Oh. How long have you been there? Oh, just a few minutes. Early today, I saw Mr. Tolliver and your grand enter the diner together. When my shift at, at, at the new center was over, they still hadn't left. They used the greatest tool of an, of an investigative reporter. Time. When they left, I tell them I'll, I'll ta tell them here. What do you think they're up to? Whatever it is, they seem organized and determined. They mentioned the festival. They heard that too. Has Graham been doing anything different recently? Anything strange? She got a phone call this morning and rushed out the door. A call from Highland Tolliver, it seems. She was either furious or terrified. Or both. Look, be careful out there. I think we might, we might be in the middle of a scoop of a lifetime. I will. She is adorable. Aren't you coming out? Now I'm going to stick out here for a bit longer. See ya, Luca. Oh, she is so cute. <gasps> she's so cute. Oh, she's so cute. She is adorable. Oh, oh. Wait. I thought entering from the bottom goes over there. No, never mind. I got entered from the side. Interesting. This is gonna be like that, eh? Mission control authorized personnel only. So I, I do have to go there, but but before that, I want to check the father's lures because I want to see if he has different bait. <gasps> oh. some tape around the hook. Hey, you never know. <laughs> Those dang fish will eat everything, don't won't they? All right, so I need to hold and pull or something like that, right? Pull, 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 and then as it gets red, let go. Then pull, 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 as it gets red, let go. Oh, you let go too late, Lucy! Why would you do that? You did something, Buckaroo. You don't, you don't know your own strength. I feel you like I was a bit, you know, a, a, a bit too, uh, I, was, I was a bit too weak, Dad. I was weak. You will give me the power, Father. Oh, you have to reel a bit faster. I may not have been paying attention. All right. Hey. Get clean again. I'll finish all of these right now. You never know. So the dad was definitely probably killed off because of the, uh, because of those people. Most definitely, probably. I suspect at least. They might. He might be part of their system or whatever. And mother left. And I don't think the mother actually left because of some reason. Is that a paper airplane? A bunch of big words written on it. Let's see that. We regret to inform you that your application for property right with respect to the Beacon Pine CBD and surrounding area has been rejected. What's that for? Application Valentine Estate. Good. Good. Daddy, are you not telling me something, Daddy? Daddy, Luca what? No, 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 no. Luca stuck a toy stretchy hand onto the hook. Those things always get dirty anyway. They sure do, and they only work for like five minutes. Interesting. So the Valentine property wasn't allowed to be built. That means they went through hoops and loops to get them to get it built. Which is very interesting, if I do say so myself. A bracelet! So the mother was probably not left. So the, mo so the mother probably didn't leave. She was probably grabbed by the people. Or something like that. Or maybe threatened to have to leave because she was, you know, she knew too much or something. Should we give it to mom? She likes jewelry. That's sweet. That's, that's a sweet thought, Buckaroo. Ah, uh, get, get it because bucks. 
bucks are like young deer. I'll stop. I I just I I, I just think it's very uh, a, a very smart joke. But I'm not. But but I'm not sure she'd fully appreciate a pond race. If if he doesn't know, I mean, you know. I mean, you yeah, know. <laughs> Probably good to tell her though. Luca placed a sinker on the line. Sometimes the best stuff is at the bottom of the pond. Oh. And how all these things have, all of these things have been being grabbed by um, Luca's line? Who knows? No one knows. No one truly knows. Oh my gosh. That's a message in a bottle. Oh my god, that's a score. Sell it on eBay for like a million bucks. Uh, Malice 80 proof whiskey. Hard liquor for hard man. <laughs> oh yeah. Best leave that be. Takes a real piece of work to leave laying something around like that lying around. Okay, can I... I can't look at any of those. Okay, so I, I'm guessing I'm out of bait and stuff like that to grab... Yeah. Alright, so, uh, so I'm done with that for now then. And I'm gonna go to the city and I'm gonna, I'm gonna quickly talk to everyone because I can yet again for some reason yet again. Can I do the cool kid pose at night over here? Oh yeah. Look at me go. Look at Luca go. Look at Luca go. <laughs> I did it. I changed the sign. Splendid. Did, did anyone see you? I don't believe so. You were right. It was simple enough to just re rearrange the letters. An odd choice for a prank, though. In situations such as these, odd is good. The two boys shared a mischievous grin. I can't wait for everyone to see the big reveal. It should be quite memorable. Let's make ourselves scars for now. All right, goodbye, sir. Goodbye, ma'am. Goodbye, everybody. Uh, perennial harvest. So there's probably a sign for the door. Oh, the sign for the festival. Ah. Ah. I see. I see. Interesting. And I can't help but notice that it's a red light on that house, on, on the keycard place there. I suspect that I'm going to require a keycard to go somewhere then. Hmm. 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 Huh. Keep out. It's on. It, the light is on as well. The light The light was not on. No, not you. I'm looking for things to interact with that I haven't interacted with before. I'm trying to grab that. Come on. Oh, that was just that the whole time? Ah, okay. This reminds me of... Um, I mean, okay. At least the radio part reminds me of this uh, podcast that I listen to called uh, Radio 6? Radio 4? Tower 6. There we go. Uh, it's uh, it's originally... Uh, it takes inspiration from Firewatch, the game. And it starts off all right. And then it starts off... And it ends up... And it, I think it's, it's still continuing. But it, it, it's, it's ended up in a much... Way more different place than I thought it was going, and I find it interesting. And many thoughts on that, but that that, that doesn't matter. I, I just thought that the radio thing was interesting because, yeah, you know. Hook up, connect to the radio in the treehouse. That sure is how to just smack it on, and it works. Rolo, Rolo, are you there? That's not how signals work. I mean, it's sort of it is, but also not because Rolo has to give a good, good signal, and he's not because he's underground. <gasps> I'm at the treehouse now, Rolo. Mr. Kerr said you were all right. Oh, they're probably listening to all of this, aren't they? Oh, no. What happened out there? Dang it, Rolo, where are you? Oh, no. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. Luca could only see a cloaked shape behind the rocket. I've got weapons in here. You sure do. You sure do. So you better come out right now. To hear as a muffled voice began. Mm hmm. Weapons. How could you hurt something that's already dead? Fear gripped Luca's throat. Uh huh. Okay. What? You don't recognize me? I, I, I don't even recognize myself anymore. Luca stared at the ground for a moment. 
trying to place the dampened voice. Oh, it's him. Oh, it's him. Is the mutant we made just just an hour ago? We made a mutant. Don't worry about it. We made a scary mutant, and um. He looks horrifying because he splashed some green goo on them. Some of that yummy, yummy green goo. Yeah, it's him. I'm a monster. And now they hunt me like the beast I am. Iggy. Luca reached over empathetically. Iggy's tone jolted to dejected anger. Don't touch me! It's all your fault. He slumped to the ground, overwhelmed by guilt. I'm so sorry. I I didn't mean to. I lost control. So you couldn't control yourself for a second. And now I get to and I get to be the one. Well, you were a complete total beehole. Um uh like before that. So and if you didn't come there to be a big beehole, then you wouldn't have to have been mutantified. There must be a new way to fix this. Oh, you're gonna be my savior? Perfect little Luca saves the day with his positive attitude and the power of friendship. I, none of this matters. There's no time. They're after me. They chase me all through Weepwood. I only came in here to hide. Hide from who? Who's after you? Luca. Luca. Hello? It's not safe, Luca. Rolo, where are you? The treehouse. I'm at the treehouse, Rolo. Where are you? Oh, Luca, the treehouse isn't safe. They said they were going to the treehouse. I'm not going to tell you to stay away from the treehouse. Who said they were going to the treehouse? The clipboards! What did I tell you? Those perennial harbors vacadoos are after me. They've been chasing me and yelling questions at me. What sort of questions? Stuff were saying uh, the same thing they always do. But it's different now. Less asking, more threatening. We're, we're going to figure this out, Iggy. Yeah, well, thanks. Oh, no. Hello! Is anyone present in this arboreal domicile? Oh, God. That, that, that sure is coming, going up and down. Crap, they found me. Luca, what's happening? Don't panic. You stay here and, and, and I'll see what they want. Oh, gosh. Okay. Oh, there's so many of them. Why are there so many of them? There are so many of them. I thought they were their own person, but no. Wait, I thought they were their own, like, sentient person. I, I, they're, they're all robots? What? Hello, Mr. Van Horn. Would you... We would love to hear your thoughts. Do you have time for an inform, informal chat? We will be brief. Your time is valuable to us. Uh, be done in just a second. Of course, of course, of course, of course. Of of course, we have a problem. Look, you gotta get out of there. Who's out there? Is it them? Yes, yeah, the clipboards. A bunch of them. How many? Maybe all of them? And yeah, you were right. They're saying the same thing. They're saying the same stuff, but with a creepy knob cranked up to 10. I say it was cranked up to 256. Mighty, mighty young Iggy be present. We would love to hear his thoughts too. Run! He slumped to his knees. I don't know what to do. I'm just so tired. Luca, what do we do? Luca grabbed the walkie-talkie and headed for the window. Follow my lead. Luca and Iggy climbed up the back of the treehouse to its roof, where Rolo had constructed his MCDC. Oh? The mission control defense cannon. Oh. oh. From behind the crowd of clipboards, William Kerr strode forward, a warm smile on his face. Oh no, this dude. Iggy, there you are. You gave all of us, all of us a heck of a scare. Go away, just leave me alone. Oh, I'm so sorry, Iggy, but no can do. Don't worry there, we're here to help. Help? That, then why were you chasing me? Luca, can you talk some sense into your pal here? Just look at him, he's not well. What's wrong with him? What, what, what did that gunk do to him? Well, that's a pretty honking big question there, Luca. All you need to know is that he's sick. He's real sick, Luca. 
I just, I, I, I just need you to help, uh, let, to let us up there and take care of him. He told Rolo was okay. That was he was going back to his place resting. He is. Poor fella just got a little lost. That's a lie. That's a hurtful thing to say, Luca. I thought we were buddies. Why, because he lets you ramble on like a wackadoo? Nobody likes you, you creep. Her smile faltered. Oh. Why don't you pop on down here so we can have a face-to-face? -face? Yelling like this is going to give us all a heck of a sore throat. And who wants that? Lucas grip tightened on the MCDC. What did you do to Rolla? You liar! Well, shucks, Luca. The only teeny tiny fib I told you was that he was at home. He is resting and he is perfectly safe. For now, at least. What happens to him next is up to you, Luca. Look around. You're in quite the pickle and I'm the only person in the whole wide world who can help you. You're gonna decide how this ends. Oh, no. Oh. Luca's mind raced. He no. He was caught in a trap. What do you do when there's... He wiped his cheeks with a oh. sleeve. What are you gonna do, Luca? Oh, no. Why me? Luca drew himself up and decided to take the only option he left. Fight! Let's go, honk and honkers! And decided to Let's do this. Let's do this! Fight. He swung the mission control defense cannon around, aiming it confidently at the smirking face of William Kerr. Dun, 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 dun. Hey, Mr. Kerr! He summoned his most insolent demeanor. Rolo sends his regards. Oh. Hey! That was uncalled for more than more and more that was uncalled for more than a little rude. And just plain unsanitary. Look, I really did think we had we, we, we were good pals. What a shame this it's it's all come to this. Kerr turned his back on the two boys. And this with a nonchalant wave of the hand, he made his exit. That's a this this is not going to this is not going the way I expected it to go. Well, we're all dead now. As the clipboards began to slowly advance on the treehouse. Luca looked to Iggy with resignation in his eyes. The end. Okay. That escalated quickly. Maybe discretion was the better part of valor here. Maybe I kind of didn't have an option though. Let's put a pin in this for now. Oh boy. Okay, fight we have done. I feel like we need to do the other one, um, which was, oh, shame fight and everything else has been done. Huh. There's also a closed off branch. No, that's, that's going to continue. Go back there for a quick second. That's only shame. So that's going to end over there. Interesting. Mr. So I need to find more tokens, probably. Probably. Okay, so we've done that. We've done that. We've done those two. We've done all of those. Oh wait. Warehouse of horrors. We haven't struggled. Okay. Um. Okay. Interesting. The story is about struggle. Okay. This is a story about struggle. Luca could hear a machine humming somewhere nearby. He felt around wildly, searching for something, anything that could help. His hands found a hard object, maybe a tile. Oh. He yanked it free, lifting the cold stone. Oh. Let me go. Luca swung the. I really like her voice. It's really awesome. The shape that still held fast to his leg. Oh wow, okay. He heard the crack of glass as the stone hit the assailant's mask. Oh. With a muffled yelp, the hand let go. Luca was free and scrambled to the door. He never looked back once on the long run home. Mm. Chapter 3. Everything's fine. The next morning, it was quieter than usual at the breakfast table. Oh. Only the sound of silverware and chewing interrupted the awkward silence. Okay, so Luca. Uh, okay, so okay, a jar has to be delivered to town. 
Okay. So what did you and Earl get up to yesterday? Earl had things to do, so I sort of just poked around town. I set the jam down by the front door. Oh, that was fun. Now we get to do a whole different part of the game. Here we go. There's two batches to top off. Mm -hmm. One for Mr. Tolliver and one for Bag and Wag. Deliver jam to Mr. Tolliver. Okay. Another for Mrs. Uh, Fratelli at the diner. Okay. Oh, and, and Mr. Nuncrete. He said he wanted some more. I suspected as much. Yes, he seems to have taken a particular interest in my jam. I feel like he does. He okay. Now that we know that Mr. Nuncrete is part of this whole thing, I feel like he doesn't actually care about the grandma. He cares more about um what she's up to. There was some extras in the basket for that enthusiastic gentleman. Just make sure uh, Fratelli and uh, Tolivier. I get the ones on, on top. No problem. Off with you now while the day is young. Damn. All right. I'm going to go outside, Grandma. Don't you worry, Grandma. Don't you worry. And don't you forget about my oh, fridge opening up. All right. So that's fine. Oh, she's just sweeping. I want to turn that. Okay, keep that on. Bye, Grandma. Oh. Okay. The phone call that she goes to. Fair enough. So that happens again. That happens again, and we are here for it. We sure are. Alright, so we've already been through that. So that... So this is the Valentine lady that she was talking about, about having negotiations with. Okay. Simple matters, we both have the same problems. Very well, we can meet tonight. The house do be cozy. Um, I don't think searching this house is going to yield any more... Things. Uh, tokens. So we're not going to do that. So we have to, we don't have the walkie-talkie this time. So roll being captured pretty much entitled our death. So, okay. Uh, all right. All right. I guess we're going to go deliver things. Yeehaw, let's go. Let's go. Hey, Rolo. Okay. So, sorry about yesterday, your Roxy can be so annoying. But good news, no more boring chores for me today. Did you, did you make it to the old Valentine warehouse? So, what did you find? Give me the dirt. Uh, something happened, there was someone else there. What? Who was it? Was it aliens? I knew it would be aliens. No. Zombies. No. Alien zombies? Or zombie aliens? What else could it possibly be? Rolo, I'm gonna de de deliver these into town first. We can catch up after. Ooh, is it a whole thing? Sounds like a whole thing. Yeah, we should talk about it. Talk about it here. We made the treehouse tonight. I'm not sure what this treehouse is of what you speak. <sighs> Meet me at Mission Control. Roger that, Space Cadet. He is doing the yeehaw, the meema. Oh no, let's go. Mm hmm Okay. So the festival sounds gonna change probably that we know that much. So we gotta deliver this to people, but I wanna talk to everyone that I can. Uh you can't you won't move with the amount of boxes? Good for you, my dude, good for you. Now what if I go talk to them with my jam? Oh, oh, right. I didn't mean to do that. But if I have any other cards, then I would like to do that. I don't. It doesn't matter. Okay. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, let's go here and talk to you. Uh, do you think Jam would be a good bait? I, I guess it depends on what you're trying to catch. At this point, anything. <laughs> that do be sad. But it's true. Uh, no, you're talking to me whole. It's my favorite song. Yeah, if you wear a sock for a long time or multiple times, it, it does get a hole in it. And also, um, they get very hard very fast. So, I mean, not hard, they get dry very fast, which makes them get a hole faster. So, makes sense. Yeah, if you have a favorite sock, then you gotta treasure it and never use it ever again. Just look at it all day, every day, and they only imagine wearing it because only that you know the true feeling of. Makes sense. Yeah, it does. Okay, so I need to talk to people and figure things out. Here we go. 
Mr. Wild, I trust you've come to chat. Valentine, oldest of sharper Valentine's children. It is she! Had a way of making questions seem like demands. Certainly. What seems to be the problem? Mr. had learned to assume that if he was hearing from Eris, it was because she had taken issue with something he had put in the paper. I couldn't help but notice that the, first, the front page of the morning's paper was consumed with the stories about the city festival. Well, yes, that is the news of the day. But there is no mention of the museum, nor the foundation through which it was endowed. I'm sorry, Mr. Mrs. Val Ms. Valentine. My readers are, are, are more so interested in, in the town's future, more than anything, more than any one family in particular. <laughs> there was a time, Mr. Wilder. When, my, when the goings-on of my family was the only thing this town cared about. Well, too bad. Welcome to progress in the future. Oh, no. Well, things change, ma'am. And you know, change is dangerous. She's gonna be... She's, she's gonna finish... She's gonna think... She's being threatened, isn't she? Yeah, she is. Ah, <sighs> Finish that thought, and, and I will make your monocle permanent, a permanent picture of your anatomy. My apologies. Good day, Miss Valentine. Did I give you the impression this conversation was finished? Mr. Wilder averted his gaze and began to polish his monocle. Well, good day, Mr. Wilder. Oh, she's kind of, just kind of hovered there for a second. Just went around town for a second, just go, go, on a quick little walk. So I have to go there, I know, but I don't talk to everyone first. Anger from the past, make mistakes not yet made, and a glimmering hope for the future. He carried them all in equal parts, everywhere he went. Oh heavens, what a burden to bear. Uh-huh. Sure is. Oh gosh. I... Okay. No talkie. No talkie to all of them. That is sad. No one wants to do me a talkie. No one wants me to do a talkie walkie to the... Pocky Maki. Um, here you go. Huddled at his counter, Hiram Tolliver was meticulously shining apples. Ooh. More accurately, Hiram Tolliver was meticulously shining one apple. Oh. I wonder why. I wonder why he's suspiciously shining one apple. With Eep. Help, Mr. Tolliver fumbled the apple, flailing at the air as it fell. Oh, sorry. Ah, uh, no. A new budier, new budier. He leaned forward and lowered his voice. I see you have something for me. Yeah, Grand had some jam I'm supposed to give you. He leaned in a bit further. Jam. Yes, these ones on top. She wrote your name on Mr. them. Tolliver leaned back, speaking loud enough for anyone to hear. Ah, oh, yes. The jam! Thank you so much for delivering this jam to me! He reached forward and snapped up the jars of jam, giving Luca a little wink. I shall put these on the store shelves post hast Okay, she finished my deliveries. Of course. Of course. So there is something in the jams. Okay. Hmm. Of course. He is Russian and French. Alright, so that's done. Smack, 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 smack. Alright, so... How do you keep the ice cream cold? We keep them on ice. Where do you get the ice from? I don't know, somewhere cold. <laughs> How do they keep somewhere cold cold? Look, Bert. Do you want some ice cream or not? No, I'm good. Oh, okay. What if I go in here now? Is it different? We all know Beacon Pines is a great town. What you may not know is great towns grow from mighty roots. And that is why you cannot tell the story of Beacon Pines without telling the story of one sharper Valentine. Young Sharper's keen intellect and strong moral fiber led to a grand vision. A vision of a community dedicated to a better tomorrow. In his own words, a better tomorrow is within our grasp, but it requires a singular mind to harness it. Lucky for us, he decided to grow that vision here, in Beacon Pines. And how does one grow a better tomorrow? With fertilizer, of course. 
Valentine's fertilizer company became the lifeblood of a town yearning for purpose. Ah, okay. A scientific experiment gone wrong. So they're trying to create fertilizer, fertilizer that, that grows things very well, or ex accelerates growth. And they made something like that green goop, which ex accelerates all growth. What if Gran is mother but older? Ooh. Okay. Interesting. Anyways, we've done all the stuff we over here for now. I suppose we're gonna go here now. Okay. Okay. We're gonna go up here and finish this up. Uh, we're gonna talk to the bat. Oh, the adorable bat. Here we go. The adorable bat is the best. Hey, Don. Hey, Luca, what's up? Dawn had dreams of becoming a big-time reporter. Mm. At night, she searched for the story that could be her big break. By day, she hawked papers at the newsstand. Mm. Oh, they got you. They got you on jam delivery, eh? Yep. Hey, Don, have you noticed anything weird at our town lately? What well, sort of weird things? Stuff going on with the Valentine Building. Hmm. You might say that I've heard some things. I'm working on a story about it right now. So what's going on? Can't can't say quite yet. I just need to follow up on a few leads. Keep me in the loop, okay? Sure thing. Have you seen the new kid around yet? New kid? Yeah, came from from the big city. His her parents both got jobs here. But get this, one of them is uh, working for William Kerr and uh, um and perennial harvest. And the other is working for the heiress Valentine. And and Valentine's re represent the Beacon Pines' past. Perennial har harvest has positioned itself um, as the town's future. Must be make must make for some interesting dinner con table conversations. I can imagine. Interesting, very interesting. She is also my favorite person right now. She is the best. She will always be the best. She is the cutest as well. Okay, so I do need to go downtown anyway, so I might as well go here and finish the job here. Hey, it's you who was there before. If you could just let me be alone, young Mr. Van Horn. Oh, sure, sorry, sorry to bother you. It's just that... Oh, <laughs> Mr. Kerr has asked me to make the opening speech at the festival. Being mayor and all, you might expect me to be a charismatic speaker. The truth is, I'm, I'm terribly nervous. I really don't think about uh, I'm cut out for this sort of thing. Cut for being mere or for public speaking? Both, I suppose. Oh. I never really chose any of this. It's more of a duty to my family. For our legacies. That, that sounds like a heavy burden. But as for the festival, just speak from your heart. I'm sure it'll be great. Yeah, that sure was gonna work out with this dude. Definitely. Can I, can I interact with any of these? No. I just carry out jam jams. Because I like me a good jam. But if it's my favorite little jam runner. Hey, Miss Fratelli. Look at you. She leaned forward and pinched Luca's cheek. You're all skin and bones. Is a, is a granite feature you? She is. It's just... I understand. You know, I taught your mama how to cook back in the day too. You might, you may not even remember, but you used to help, but you you and her used to help out in dinner in the diner. Oh, see the picture over there? That's you helping your mama back in the day. So cute running around in your little apron taking orders. Sorry, the whole situation just breaks my heart. What happened with Eleanor? Break! Ow, my jaw! Today's not a good day for my jaw. I've got a feeling she's out there somewhere yearning to be with you again. She sure is. Few things in the world can um, keep a mother from her son. Shifted the basket uncomfortably. Mm. Oh yes, let's see here. Mrs. Fratelli lifted the cloth and inspected the jam. And they even have a name on them. How thoughtful. She carefully lifted out her jars of jam. Mm-hmm. You tell your grand hello for me, Luca. Will do. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Very, very interesting. She was very careful with her jam, and she was happy that it was labeled. So I, I still suspect that they're, they're each getting parts from 
jam. But I don't know. Oh, library's open. Hello. Jam delivery. Hey, Cardo. Good afternoon, Luca. Can I help you find something? Maybe, maybe not. Try me. Well, there's been some weird stuff going on at the old Valentine house. Can't say I know anything about the old fair house. But the empty highs won't stay empty for so long. Huh? Cardo motioned to the book in front of him. The more I read my bees, the more similarities I see with people. If I have collapses and fails, it doesn't uh, stay empty for long. A new queen will set up shop pretty quickly. So you're saying it would make sense for someone new to start using the warehouse? Nature abhors a vacuum. Unless it's in space. Oh no. Hey Jays. Oh hey Luca. Have you seen this new issue about hand comic? Not yet. No spoilers please. It's awesome. The flashback. No spoilers please. We get to see how mild mannered Henry Adams becomes Hank Atomic Menace Face of Justice. Chase, no spoilers! Oh, sorry. My point is, you're gonna love it. Sorry, alright, Chase. Uh, catch you later. Alright, Roger that, Space Cadet. Interesting. Very, very interesting. New additions, huh? I haven't interacted with these yet. There were rarely any actual new additions. Mm -hmm. Simply a variety of existing content rotated into the front display each week. Uh huh. Not fooling anyone. It sure fools me because I'm dumb. I'm as dumb as Dumbo. I'm as dumb as Dumbiness. I want to go to the other place first. The. I don't know, Dilly Dally. I gotta, gotta get this jam delivered. Okay. I wanna see if the hole is patched up yet. I feel like it. Oh, yeah, it, it probably will be because I had to bonk the uh, person on the head. Okay. Got some jam for you, Mr. Nuncreed. Luca, you seem chipper. Well, aside from being on delivery duty, it's a nice day. Mr. Nuncreed eyed Luca for a moment, then nodded in agreement. I suppose it is. So do you so do you want your jam? Oh right. Usually Juniper drops those off herself. I guess she's busy today. Anyway, this is my last delivery for the day. Oh, in that case. Nuncreed snatched the basket from Luca. I'll hold on to the basket until until next time. I see your gran. That's definitely not creepy at all, and not suspicious at all. Oh, it's a new kid! Hey, you. Anchovies or pineapple? What? Don't think. Just answer. Pineapple. Why? How old are you? Twelve? Perfect, follow me. Who are you? Anyone ever tell you uh, you ask so many questions? Just try to keep up, okay? Dun, 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 dun. What just happened? Well, okay, I guess we're running after the new kid. Yeehaw time! Oh, is she a pizza seller? Hey, what the crazy coincidence! Here's my new friend I was just telling you about. Oh, that's wonderful! Maybe we just hit it off. Oh, really? Get this, his favorite pizza topping is in the whole world is pineapple. Oh, um, and what is your new little friend's name? Beck locked eyes with Luca. The look on her face was equal parts expectant and desperate. Luca Van Horn, nice to meet you. I'm Nelly and this is uh, Ilonia. We're Beck's parents. Aww, adorable. Beck gave Luca a quick nudge. Oh yeah, Beck told me all about you. All it feels like we have known each other for years. So you both can start making, obsessing about me, making friends. Oh darling, we never doubted you. It's just that for children with a few or five closer friends, the probability for stunt, stunted development doubles. Well, one down, four to go, please. Uh, four to go, I guess. What Ellie means is that uh, we we just want to make this move as easy as, as possible on you. You can relax. A friend has been uh, befriended. This calls for a uh, celebration. Look, you must join for us for dinner tonight. Dinner? Wow, another coincidence! I actually asked him, uh, and he said he would love to. It's just wonderful. In that case, we should we should pick up some groceries. You two don't get into too much trouble now. Okay, bye. Don't worry about it. Ha 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 ha. Thanks a ton. You're welcome. I, I owe you one. My mom's great and all, but they can be a little bit much sometimes. 
or how the, in the little cottage next, next to that big mansion place. You live on the Valentine estate? Yeah, that, that's the spot. Maybe me by the big, their big creepy gate. Don't be late. Alright, I'm back to square one on this whole friend gift, grift. Great, see you there. She is adorable. Ah. All the adorable kids and adults. Alright, so... Wait, I'm... Uh, what am I... No I'm done with meet back at the creepy gate. <laughs> Let's go to the creepy gate. Like we always wanted to. Oh, hi. Good morning, Jif. Uh, Joff. Let's go get about it. Another day further down the tubes, if you ask me. Come on now, it's not all bad. The festival is coming up. Humph, the festival. Oh man, Valentine used to put on cockamamie shindigs all the time. And where did that get us? Well, it's the perennial harvest putting on this one. They're doing it for the whole town. As far as I see it, the difference between the old Valentine company and the new perennial harvest outfit. Jeff dug through his pockets for a bit. So that's why the Valentine kid wanted to change the signs on the harvest thing. It was because um, they are in um, the thing. They're, they have a feud. They're two families. Well, companies in this case. The difference between this empty soup can and this brown banana. But these are both garbage. Exactly. Oh boy, he sure has opinions on things. And I wonder what Jeff, 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 Yuff does. Before, before I go to the right, I'm going to go to up here. Oh, hi. Who oh, there, little buddy? What brings you to the, this neck of the woods? Oh, I was just wandering around a bit. Wandering? How wonderful! Children and their wonderful wandering. Oh, to be young. Anyways, I can't just let you pass now. Top secret business that way. Winked with a wry smile. Very wry, very smile. Oh, I'm just yanking your chain. Perennial Orvis is just uh, making a few improvements. Gave Luca an energetic thump on the shoulder. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Better head home now. Our harvest of eights. Goodbye. Alright. We're gonna go over here and the bees are not gonna be there. Hello, hello, hello. So who all lives in that house? Ares and Gus Valentine grew up there. And Solomon moved in a few years back. The creepy kid... In the vest? That sounds like the one. So there's three people in, in that huge building? I bet a bunch of shady stuff has happens there all the time in, the, in a place like that. Not really, the Valentines pretty much keep uh, to themselves. So it's empty and boring? Pretty much. What a waste. My mom says that, that it used to be a, um, a way busier back before the Sharper died. Before the Val Harvest. Oh no, oh no, no. Interesting, very, very interesting. Mmm. Mmm. Okay. Okay, that's like the fifth time someone's mentioned this foul harvest thing. And you all use the same ominous tone. Eventually, you're gonna have to explain to me how that harvest got all fouled up. But, but we can't keep our parents waiting anymore. This way. All right, I'm just behind you, creepily, and there's someone going to be behind there. No, there's not going to be anyone behind there. That's fine. Okay, cool. This is a very cute cottage. This reminds me of the cottage from Matilda. Very cute. Most kids would have just ditched me at this by this point. Why are you still here? You look like you, you look like you could use you, you, know, you collect you should use some help. Like kids speak, okay? You know what, Luca? You're not so bad. Let's get this. Let's get through this as, as simply as possible. Just eat, smile, and nod. Fun. Wait, whatever you do, don't bring up their work. I can, I think I can handle that. Beck took a long breath, then gave a firm nod. Here goes nothing. Oh boy, here we go. Chapter four. All right. Okay, I think that's a good place to end it for now. Okay, I can't do that. Uh, just because um, I've played quite a bit right now, and even though I'm going to end on chapter four's end, I think we've gone through enough to go through a lot, a lot of the story and it, it, it is getting interesting we finished like two paths and we have to find the correct one still and it is intriguing i am intrigued about what the valentines are doing so clearly they've created something that grows things a lot and they're probably either trying to grow uh they're probably trying to grow back something or like valentine family something like that. something to do with that um they, they want to use the chemicals for some reason which is very very interesting anyways um 
yeah, that's about it for now. Thank you all for watching. Hope you all be doing good. And um, yeah, hope you all enjoyed that. And I will see you next time. Take care and goodbye.